Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. Welcome to you to my series Learn Radiology with Dr. Anil Joshi. Today's topic is about a dark room which is a part of conventional radiography unit and this is a condensed version. The large extensively covered lecture you will find on my website or on my YouTube channel. To start with are the disclaimers. Most of the material we have used here is from our teaching material of the department. But some of it is borrowed from the net which is royalty free and we acknowledge with thanks those from where we have got this. With that brief introduction, let's get going to the today's topic that is a dark room, a condensed version, good for the medical students, good for the X-ray technicians and those who are appearing for the entrance exams. Now what is a dark room? Dark room is a part of conventional radiography unit. It has got X-ray unit. It has got X-ray processing in a dark room, which we are going to see it today. I agree totally that uh, as the days are adv advancing, this technique is getting absurd. Today at very few center it is there, but as a technologist and as a radiology student, you must know what it was in the past on which you are highly depending and which have really elevated standards of radiology till that days. Now what it has got is a two type of lighting. One thing is called white lighting and second is called safe light. White lighting has got application and safe light has got application which you are going to see subsequently. Now what a white light does, it is for inspection and maintenance of the cassette, screen, dark room, then cleaning workspaces, serving, servicing of the equipment. Here the equipments were tanks, then hangers and safe light. These needs to be maintained and for that we need a white light. Now it is situated close to the ceiling so that entire dark room will get eliminated. It has got moderate intensity. That's okay. That is your convenience and the size of a dark room and where the light is situated. It can be from 30 watt till 60 watt. Then it is preferably centrally situated. Why? Because you know every corner needs to be eliminated by it. So it has to be centrally as well as highly on the ceiling as high as possible. Then more than two switches, the reason some has got a switch in the door so that when the door is closed, the lights are getting off. That is to save the accidental exposure to the film when you are working. So usually it has got two switches. One thing is in the near the door and second is at a working space. Two switches are preferred. Then identification of respective switches is important here, which are the white light, which is a safe light, which is the for the servicing purposes, you give some uh, points there which are used by the engineers for servicing of the room. Now, this is the safe light. What you can say, it has got a, a tin box and there is a filter to it. That is red filter. So what it does is it gives you only red light out. Why red light? Because films are not sensitive to it. What will happen if the film is sensitive and the light has got same uh, color the film will get fog so here what we are seeing is it is of the red color because films are not sensitive to red it is either blue base or a green scale green base both these are not sensitive to red then light from safe light directly falls into the workspace this type of uh, safe lights are called Behings safe light so this is a type of safe light which gives you a good light on your workstation however where you are processing the film, there is not much light. Because film is more time in the developer and fixer as compared to the time it takes. You take out the film from the cassette and you put it deep again into the developer by fixing it to a hanger. Then maximum distance should be 1.2 meter. But because whatever safe you say or whatever red light you say, it may emit certain light to which the films are sensitive, that either blue or green. So that can cause a fact fog to the film. So that's why it should be at a slightly distance. The 1.2 meter is a fair distance and that will give you a good light also to process and it will be safe for the film also. Now, what is indirect safe light? Directs the light towards the ceiling which reflects the light back to the room. Now here what is happening is you are not receiving any direct light from the safe light because safe light should be safe installed to prevent a general illumination of the dark room because it is facing the ceiling and most of the time the color in the dark room are either very dark or usually black color. 
then suspended at least 2.1 meter above the floor level so usually to the ceiling it is fixed facing the ceiling so that you get a light which is reflected and not a direct light so safe light can be used for direct as well as indirect illuminations this is the see you are seeing a safe light which is giving you indirect illumination now we will go to the filters now th this is a x-ray filter which is very specific then a sheet of gelatin dyed to appropriate color and sandwiches between two sheets of glass or protective plastic material they are available in the market usually a filter is never purchased separately it comes with a safe light so total safe light unit is purchased which has also got a filter inside lamp usually you should as far as possible use a red light but any color will do but we were preferring red light red filter to give a double protection and to reduce the fog the extremes of heat and temperature deteriorates the filter gelatin so darkroom temperature should be maintained it is always humid but temperature you should maintain because there is uh, less, I will not say no uh, air circulation, there is less because there are ways in which a exhaust fan is fitted, how a dark room should be designed has got this also an important component that it should have at least some free ventilation that is assured because of the certain type of the exhaust fans which will not emit light inside but they will pull out the air then they should be cleaned periodically otherwise they will lose their clarity now how does safe light works here we are seeing it the film has got different layer the, now if you see the all light shades falling on the film the yellow light transmits only the yellow filter transmits only yellow light and red filter only transmit red light so other lights are filtered not that other lights are not falling on the filter but the lights are filtered and only the yellow for the yellow filter and red for the red filter comes out yellow filter we do not use because films are either green sensitive or blue sensitive and in both them yellow is very clear very near it so best is to use red which is more safe when the light is passed to the colored filters certain wavelength of colors are absorbed by the filters wireless as compared to the wavelength of other now corresponding to the color of the filter will be transmitted so in red red will be transmitted in yellow yellow will be transmitted making the correct selection of safe light of course it goes without saying it should be a red matching the filter to the film means choosing a filter which will transmit a color to which the film is not sensitive not sensitive is a bold statement we will say less sensitive while less stopping all the light to which the film is sensitive so for red film is less sensitive we put a filter of red color now we will come to the spectrum transmission graph manufacturer produces graphs for their safe light called spectral transmission of filter transmission graph their purpose is to indicate that the part of the visible spectrum which will be transmitted by the filters and so aid the radiographers in matching the appropriate film to the type of the filter and film are matched so that there will not be any fog by these filters now, then also then panchromatic film prevents a special or it presents a different problem because it is panchromatic it has got a different problem since it will have a color sensitivity exceeding as far as red end of the spectrum is concerned but in routine radiography we do not use them so it is a exceptional combination we are talking as far as our routine radiography department was concerned it is that adjustable to process such film in complete darkness so if you have still have to pro uh, process the pan chromatic film you will have to process it in a complete dark for that you need a practice but not that it is impossible or difficult but you have to do it with differently put off the safe light and do the work then spectral transmission graph here we are showing you this is the monochromatic film what we are usingly we are using routinely and this is for the orthochromatic film we are showing you the, the sensitivity spectrum graphs how safe is safe light is it really 100 percent safe it is partially safe at what distance it is safe at what distance it can cause fog yes no safe light is completely safe all the films will become significantly fogged if exposed to safe light for a long time number two they are exposed from a very short distance this is because safe light filters are not perfect absorbent of the universal wavelength and it is true all the films have some sensitivity to all the wavelengths 
so not that when we call as the green based film it will be sensitive to some it will not be it is green based so when a film is exposed to x ray it will emit green light a blue base it will emit a blue light but not that other shades of light will be emitted they will be emitted but that will be in very less amount thus the intensity of illumination and the film handling time be kept to minimum if significant fog is has uh, you do not want significant fog what that means as far as possible get used to the work process as fast as possible what is the processing take the film out of the cassette put it to the hanger this hanger after clipping needs to be kept in dipped in developer so this thing you can make it as fast as possible by practice further the de developing time fixing time is not in our hand it needs to be fixed as per the temperature and the working condition now what is the effect of excess safe light to the exposure if you put excess safe light then what will happen if safe light is not safe it is producing excess light two principal feature occur when the light when a film is exposed to the safe light for a long time here we are seeing there is a fogging of the film which will be obvious increase in fogging and overall loss of the contrast to the film which will not be liked by a radiologist then what are the equipment you are seeing here this is all old dark rooms it was needing a entirely different civil work it was requiring definitely different furniture if you call that as but usually they are made up of the rcc that is the construction then tanks were there developer fixer rinser then uh, hanger you can see the uh, hanger mounted to the wall then there is a safe light which should be safe now alternative to this was a automatic processor which we are go not going to see in this lecture but it is covered in some other lecture in extensive manner but automatic process same room will not say same equipment can be used that will not that will need chemical but the process is totally different you are seeing a manual processing unit processing chemical hangers suspending to the wall and few cassettes on the table then film storage hopper in that you feel you store the film but there are also conditions how much film you should store as far as possible films are not stored in a dark room for because the dark room is a humid area then there is a loading bench and there are cupboards for uh, some accessory material is to for to be keep kept now this is an automatic processor extensively it is covered in some other lecture kindly visit my website or my youtube channel to get this in a extensive manner then this is a manual processing unit what you get the water is kept running around the tanks to keep the temperature down otherwise in our part the temperature goes very high up to 42 degrees 43 degrees and then you do not get good developing of the film for that reason we kept running water around the tanks so that will keep temperature down these are the developer fixers and how to prepare them is a different process was a different altogether experience when we used to prepare that these are the hangers hangers of course of the film size right from the 6 and 1/2 by 8 and 1/2 then 8 by 10 10 by 12 14 by 15 as far as possible where you used in very few centers because the cost of film was very high now these are the cassettes it has got screens now cassette screens again a topic of different lecture they are covered now it is storage of the film but as far as possible i told you these uh, film hoppers are to be kept outside the dark room for the humidity purpose otherwise if you keep long time films in that hopper in a dark room the film will start getting sticking to each other now it is how a working space utilization is done this is for the larger departments where the point to appreciate is the x-ray number room number 1 and x-ray room number 2 are connected to a automatic processor here but that can be taken as the dark room in place of it it should be convenient to the x-ray room to pass the films and usually the pass box open directly from the x-ray room into the dark room with that we are coming to end of the short lecture covering briefly the dark room design role of a dark room how it was used though it's a technique of old times we should know it because it has given radiology an excellent service with that we are ending our lecture thank you for giving me your valuable time do visit our website do visit our youtube channel and enjoy a feast of lectures there are lot of lectures on lot of topics and lot of uh, clinically interesting material for those who are exam going for radiology as well as technology courses thank you goodbye and take care